Good cloudy afternoon to you, friends. It's time for another episode, installment of Front Porch Tales. Um, and this installment is called My Friend Jim and Why I Don't Like Him. <laughs> My friend Jim is a minister. He wears a big cross. He gives a wad of money away every year. He's devout and smart. His children are gifted and his wife mows the lawn. Naturally, I despise him. Once he went on a trip to Honduras. A mission trip, he told me, to minister to the poor. It was the middle of winter, of course, when God routinely calls us to minister in the tropics. He needed work boots for the trip, so I lent him a pair of mine. I have two pairs of boots, my motorcycle boots and my snow shoveling boots. My motorcycle boots are the John Waynes of footwear. I pull those babies on and small children cower behind their mother's skirts. No one, I repeat, no one wears them but me. My snow shoveling boots are part of the Ward Cleaver connection or collection. Thankfully, I haven't had to wear them since convincing my wife that shoveling snow actually melts fat from the hips and thighs. Jim got those. I drove Jim to the airport. He'd never flown before and was nervous. So I comforted him by put it, pointing out that death by airplane crash, though increasingly common, is virtually painless. <laughs> Jim was gone for three weeks. He called on the phone when he got back home. I have good news and bad news, he said. The bad news is that the airline lost all my luggage, including your boots. The good news is that the airline says they're sure to find everything. They still call him every week to report on their progress. <laughs> Naturally, Jim and I remain confident that the airline will pursue this matter with the same thorough efficiency we've come to expect from them. There are losses and there are losses. Whenever I see Jim, I reminisce aloud about the best pair of boots I'd ever had. But the truth is, I haven't missed them at all. I lost them, but they were not a loss. But my grandmother Norma died right before that, and it was an uppercut to the heart. Felt like a thief broke in and stole the family quilt and ripped out the centerpieces. So there are losses, and then there are losses. Once heard a psychologist talking about loss, she said most folks she counsels are folks who suffered loss, loss of a loved one, loss of innocence, loss of trust, before they were really capable of dealing with it. Sometimes we lose things before we're done needing them. The story in the Bible tells us about a man who lost a prodigal son. The other side of that story was about a son who lost a father. Then it hit him that maybe his father wasn't lost to him after all, and he swallowed pride and headed for home. My friend Jim says pride can cause us to lose a lot of things, like perspective and faith and compassion. He's right, of course, like he is about most things, which, if you must know, is why I don't like him. But I'm working on it. As I think about the story, brief as it may be, I uh, can't help but think that COVID has caused us to lose some things. And some of them may feel like real genuine losses, but at least speaking for myself, I can say during this COVID pandemic, I've lost a lot of stuff that aren't really losses. In fact, I think I've grown by subtraction, if I could say that, because um, COVID has helped me to prioritize things in my life and reevaluate my position with God, where I want to be with Him versus where I am with Him, and to develop, uh, take the time to develop and work on a strategy to to play my part in doing something about building that relationship better. Not that I was a prodigal, but 
maybe just realizing that uh, the things that really matter are the things that last. And friends, what could be more lasting than the eternal God and the relationship we build with him? He's coming soon through Christ his son, so eyes to the skies.